This is uh, Kurt with Five Hacking Tips. Today, I'm going to cover the Bash Bunny. Um, the Bash Bunny is like the rubber ducky that I did in a previous video. Um, but the thing about the Bash Bunny is it actually has a Bash shell on it. So it's actually a Linux embedded Linux system inside what appears to be a USB mass storage device. Um, it comes with uh, two different what three different modes one well basically two different modes three different switch positions so if you have the led on the top of the device facing you and you push it all the way to the front that puts it in arming mode so that you can put in uh, any of the bash bunny scripts that are available in the payloads file that comes with it um, and i'll show you the website where there are additional payloads or updated payloads and stuff that you can download and, and refresh this thing um, and then the other two switch positions are two different attack modes. So very back is switch one, and then after that, switch two. And that's really handy um, because instead of having like two rubber duckies, one for um, OS X and the other one for Windows, and I've never really used a rubber ducky on, on Windows to tell you, or on um, OS X to tell you the truth, but I would use Bash Bunny on it um, and it's probably much more reliable. But anyways, um, so... What I've done is I've created a reflective DLL injection of malware uh, from my courses, my intermediate courses at Sector 7. Um, and then I've also used some of the techniques from the Windows Evasion course at Sector 7 um, to bypass, basically to bypass um, um, uh, antivirus detection. Um, here, hold on. With that, uh, without further ado, I'll, I'll go through um, some slides that I have available, or a slide that I have available, just to show you all the links that are out there um, that I'm working with, and, um, and to explain a little further. So actually, these are the folders. So the idea is, is when I plug this in, um, so when I plug this in, it will run a, what we call a bash bunny script, payload.txt file. In that payload.txt file, it'll run a couple of PowerShell commands, um, that will refer to another PowerShell script, which I'm calling, um, I forgot what it is. It's like or runner or something like that dot PS one. But inside of that, it will, um, it will take a, the exe file that I've created, the malware that I've created, and it will write that to a, a temp folder. This is like probably really hard to see from where you're looking, unless you're looking on a big screen television. But anyways, it'll write that file to the temp folder and then It'll write a persistence file, uh, which I think I call Fox service or something. I'm basically trying to uh, play uh, or masquerade kind of like I'm a particular, uh, a certain very popular browser. But anyways, that will go into the startup file. So that's where I'll get persistence. So even if, uh, for example, I cut off the end, by the way, it, it runs, it, it uh it runs an interpreter payload so um i'm going to set up metasploit as well and i've got a couple of hacking tips related to metasploit as well um a lot of times uh newbies or people that are just getting used to metasploit uh, don't know how to handle multiple interpreter sessions or how to set it up um that's like a, a frequent question that that comes across on, uh, on forums um Basically, uh, I'll, I'll show you how to do that. Um, and that's probably like one of the bigger tips uh, that I'm providing today. But anyways, um, it'll it'll kick off a interpreter session. And um, and even if I kill the interpreter session, and I restart interpreter later, it will still come back with a persistent connection uh, coming back to, to uh, my host on, on port 8080. Um, so let me jump into the slides here and show you basically a couple of references that we have, like some of the links here. So there's the Bash Bunny Wiki, and that it shows, you know, what that explains a lot of like what's inside the Bash Bunny handbook. That if you pay like an extra two dollars when you buy the Bash Bunny, they'll send this to you. Um, and I, I recommend that. There's also an electronic version for free. So like when you buy the Bash Bunny, you can go to Hack5 right now and, and download it. Um, and then the other link that's like really important for this is the payloads. So if you go to the Bash Bunny payloads file or a GitHub repository, 
I looked at it a minute ago and it looked like the most recent update on the payloads was like 10 days ago. So that's even newer than what I have in here. Um, so that's highly recommended when you, when you start on one of these projects. And then uh, my bash bunny files is the next link, number three. And those, those are the persistence, the Windows attack persistence uh, scripts that I've used in this demonstration that I'm about to show you right now. And of course, there's the Hack5 Bash Bunny purchase link. Costs about $119 or $129, something like that. Um, and then last but not least, uh, Sector7 Institute. Highly recommended if you want to develop malware or understand how malware is developed in C. And if it, I, I recommend that you have a little bit of understanding of C or C++ before you take the course. But it's in raw C, you're using Notepad the whole time, and you're basically using the Windows command line tool. So you're not encumbered with having to set up Microsoft Visual Studio and all of that. And the idea is low footprint using basic tools and uh, basic command line compilers. And then the last one is, is the Metasploit uh, commands. So a lot of times we use multi-handler, but we don't really know how to... Um, take on multiple sessions and the in this number six here on the e and f are are the key ones um key instructions here you set exit on session to false so you know if you exit a session it doesn't um, exit interpreter it doesn't stop listening so you set that to false and then you run uh you you type in the command run minus jz and then it will start the multiple session listener for, um, for Metasploit. So I'm going to pop over here and I'll show you some of the links here. Um, so this is basically the Bash Bunny wiki that I was talking about earlier. And then these are the Bash Bunny payloads. And right here, okay, we can see that uh, 11 days ago it was updated. Dated by one day there. And then these are my my payloads. Um, another word of warning is, you know, I, I live in Japan and most of my targets are Japan for red teaming exercises and whatnot. And um, so there's a, a bit of trickery in these scripts that if you use a non-English or a non-US keyboard, you might want to take a look at because um, because it, it shows you how to use multiple keyboards without necessarily relying on the Bash Bunny, there is a language uh, setting uh, within Bash Bunny, but that didn't that didn't quite work. And I got the Japanese file off of the Bash Bunny payloads website or a GitHub repository, but that did not seem to work. So I use these other commands. Check it out if you need to do something like that. If you want to emulate the code, though, just look for the square brackets inside the code and then just change that to whatever. And I, I put instructions in there to whatever. Um, First of all, whatever your listening port is, if you want to use Netcat, there's also some commented out sections in there where you can write over Netcat if you want to use that. I purposely don't use Netcat because Netcat's noisy and a lot of antivirus picks picks up Netcat quite easy. Um, and then last but not least, this is the Hack5 website. Okay, so it's $119.99. Um, and then here's the ebook that you can download for free. Um, and then last but not least, Sector 7 Institute. The reflective DLL injection code that I used to compile this malware um, was, was from the malware development intermediate class. If you're going to take the intermediate class and you're not super familiar with C, I would recommend taking the essentials class first. In fact, I would recommend taking the essentials first anyways because that's a good review before you jump into um, DLL hooking and injection like that and then last but not least here there's the windows evasion class um and there's some of that in here as well um because with a regular rdi i was getting detected by bit defender and some things were coming up on windows defender um so i had to work around that um so here it goes i'm going to show you the uh first let's jump into um setting up metasploit so right here, um, I've got Metasploit running already. So I'm just going to say, uh, just just like what was listed on that PowerPoint. So use um, multi handler, uh, and then I'm going to set the payload 
this is the payload that I created and that I embedded in this uh, DLL that gets injected. I'm going to say Windows X64. And then reverse TCP. And then, of course, set the L post. And I'm going to switch that off while I do this. So I don't have mask. Actually, I'm going to set the, I'll set the all the way through. So set L port. And then make that 8080. So that's what I have in the payload. And then what I want to do is uh, what I described earlier to get the multiple sessions. And I'll set the L host at the end. But basically to get the, uh, the multiple sessions, I'm going to set exit on uh, session. Make sure. Exit on. Always take notes. Important. So exit on session, not section. Let's spell there. Session. And then say that is false. And then before I hit run, I'm going to uh, put in my L host. And then I'm going to clear that so we don't have to mask that part of the screen. Um, so here we are. So I'm ready to go. And then I'm going to type run minus JZ. Is that a rapper name or something? Okay. But now you can see my IP address. So we started a reverse session there. Um, and or a uh, reverse TCP handler through Meterpreter. And I'm just going to go here on the desktop. And I'm going to plug this thing in to the USB port. So I'm basically going from my local Windows instance, and I'm going to um, send a reverse shell back to this IP. So what I want to do here is I'm going to share this screen uh, down here like this, because that's where and I plug this puppy in. And it takes a second. We'll see that it. And eventually you'll see there you go the the powershell commands through the keyboard hid recognition um and that's another thing i wanted to explain about uh the bash bunny is that it has various modes it's not like the rubber ducky where you're just dealing with an hid device you can actually set it up so for example in this script it's an hid but i also set it up as a mass storage device And if I flip this back over, now you can see that it stored my fire-exe, the malware file, in, in, in C temp. And then it started this fire service VBS, or it stored it in the startup. And it also kicked it off. It kicked it off. So if you look at the other screen, you can see that I've got Meterpreter Session 1 open. So we basically go into here. Hold on. Into here. I hit sessions minus L, then it shows the session uh, that's in play right now and sessions one. And I'm in there. And then if I type shell, voila, you can see right there, that's my profile on the Windows machine. And I'm connecting from this remote IP. Um, that's in a nutshell um, how this works. Um, the thing about this that I want to uh, emphasize a little bit is the a lot of times when we create malware, there's you know you, you go through well it, how am I going to do this attack? Am I going to go with a social? Am I going to go with a physical? Am I going to go with uh, a social and like a download combination? A lot of times with when you're doing a straight on social attack. Um, you're actually relying on somebody to click something and, and sometimes it doesn't work uh, as easy, which is where these devices come in really handy because if you can get physical access and a lot of times for an HID device, as I emphasized when I did the rubber ducky uh, video, 
is an HID device is a keyboard input device and it's hard to block that. So what do you do outside of that? Well, there was a lot of PowerShell involved with, with this attack. So, you know, I mean, limit your PowerShell uh, among your users, remove local admin privileges as much as you can. And where you have to give admin privileges and where you have to let PowerShell um, be used, because in some environments people may require it like developers, then, you know, try and separate those users uh, some way through subnetting and, and then set up a seam uh, alarm that goes off when, when uh, people outside of that area are, are attempting to use PowerShell is one way to do it. The other way, um, and also, you know, this particular thing, it, it, it works as a network device. It works as a USB mass storage device. It works as, you know, a, a serial device. Um, so um, to set up alarms uh, around that area. Although, you know, that's, that gets quite technical and you have to figure out how to do that. But it's kind of worth the step because these attacks are more and more common as insider seeding, not necessarily social attacks, but where APT groups or organized groups are actually sending people in as contractors to work uh, within organizations. These kind of attacks become more prevalent. They're, they're a lot easier to implement. All you're spending, all you're doing is spending time on on the malware development after you figure out how to make it work on um, the the bash bunny device that said it bash bunny does not work out of the box and and i mentioned that with rubber ducky um it does not work out of the box it, you, you know you have to be an engineer as offsec says you have to try harder um but uh the thing about it is is that the rewards are great because once you get that, then the mal malware and, and, and Windows Evasion becomes the focus and you can just use this tool. The other thing about the batch bunny is you have those two switch positions. So, you know, if you walk into an environment and lo and behold, everybody's using a Mac, nobody's using a Windows machine, then you've got switch position number two or whatever, and you can, you can um, uh, use that as well. Um, that is all for the Bash Bunny today. Um, I hope you enjoyed it. Uh, and uh, please like, please subscribe, and um, please uh, offer your support, comments, and please suggest uh, videos that I should make you know, if you have questions. Thank you. Have a good day.